This is my BMW E90, which is my daily driver at the moment. It's a 318i. It's the 2 litre, uh, 16 valve, 4 cylinder engine. And it's developed a bit of a running fault, so I was on my way to see uh, Ian, who runs the Fixing Assets YouTube channel. Strongly recommend that you go and sign up to see what he's doing because uh, he's got some really interesting cars um, but I was on the way to help him pull the gearbox off his Morris there's a bit of footage here of the uh, the job that we did uh, and about halfway there this car threw up um, an engine management light what I want to do is show how I would go about fixing it with very little money in the hope that if you're trying to run an old car on the cheap it might actually help you so what it was doing is it was losing power and it developed a misfire engine management light came on after stopping the car and restarting the car the engine management light went off but then when you give it some throttle uh, it then pings back up again so what my intention to do is show you the kind of steps that you would take if you had this kind of problem on your own car. The first thing I'm going to do, because this is a modern fuel injected car with onboard diagnostics, is I'm going to plug this little onboard diagnostics module into the car and that interfaces with my phone. Now, this is just a basic module, but it is compatible with the LCI E90, which is what this is. It should give me a reasonable amount of diagnostic information so the first thing I do, hidden down here in the door shut, is this little port. With the module plugged in, I can see that the light's illuminated on it, so it's clear you're getting power from the diagnostic port. If I then stick the key in, switch the ignition on, what I'm now able to do is open the app on my phone and interface with that module. Let me show you what's happening on the screen here. That it's connecting to the vehicle and it's reading the fault codes. And after I go through diagnostics, I'll then pull the fault codes off and I can search online and it'll tell me exactly what information that is. So after a quick diagnostic scan, as you can see, it's thrown up a misfire on cylinder number three. Now, curiously, this car, when I got it, had a coil pack in the glove box. So I suspect this isn't something new. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is putting a jacket on. Pull the car on the driveway. And what I'm gonna do is pull the, it's the number three cylinder that's complained about. I'm gonna pull the coil pack I'm going to swap it on a different cylinder, clean up all the connectors and I'm also going to pull the spark plug out, clean it up and I'll throw that into a different cylinder and we'll see if the fault moves or if it stays in one place. Now of course, the perfect 50-50 weight distribution gives you a fantastic handling but it does mean is that you've got to mount the engine quite far back in the chassis. So there's quite a lot of slam panel here and then the engine's way back. Cylinder number three, which is our problem cylinder, is actually under the pollen filter. So we're going to have to pull the pollen filter off, pull the engine cover off, and then we should be able to get to it. Okay, so the pollen filter removed. The next thing we've got to do is a couple of little clips and wire link to come off there, some sensors there, and then we've got to pull the tops off the strut towers. 
And once these are off, then that'll expose a couple of little eight mil bolts there, and then we can lift this whole section off. That removed, we can now get the engine cover. There's two bolts at the front, there's one at the back, and you've got to pop the oil cap off just temporarily while you take this plastic cover off. That can go back on. With the engine cover removed, you can see these are the coil packs here. And what you need to do is pull a little clip up over, and then that lets you disconnect the wiring. Let me show you. So we lift this, and as we lift this up, it actually ejects the wiring from the coil pack. It should just come off like that. These cars, it would seem, use a bespoke spark plug with a 12 point socket on it. And not only that, they're incredibly recessed and slightly offset. So, it looks like what I'm gonna have to do is get the right tool so what I'm going to do for the moment is just swap some of the coil packs around clean up all the connectors and see how it runs so this is the ignition coil that was misfiring notice it's got a bit of the um, insulation rubbed off there um, but what I'm going to do is clean it up with this which this is not WD-40 well it says WD-40 here but this is specific um, electric contract contact cleaning spray um, if you use WD-40 you leave a um, like a residue on the connectors this stuff cleans connectors and then evaporates off so I'm going to clean it all up with this and like I say I'm going to swap it onto a different spark plug and we'll see if the misfire moves I might also wrap a bit of insulation tape around that piece there if the misfire doesn't move, then I'll get a correct spark plug tool and I'll pull spark plug number three out. I'll pull all the plugs out, clean them up, I'm ready to replace them. Um, but if it moves to cylinder one, then I suspect this is the fault. So we'll just have to see how it goes. So now all that remains, make sure it actually still starts and I can drive it off the drive and take it for a little drive and see how it does. It's the night after doing that video and the car's done probably about 50 or 60 miles now trouble free so what was happening is that coil pack was grounding out and it was creating a weak spark on that cylinder um still got a bit of a blow on the exhaust but actually drives really well <laughs> 